Today, I'm going to show you how to make sure your app's user interface looks great on all screen sizes and orientations. You'll learn how to preview your user interface on a variety of devices and screen sizes. I'll also tell you why the terms profile and landscape orientation don't mean what they used to. You'll learn how to adjust your user interface based on the available space on the screen. And finally, I'll leave you with my best tips on how to build a user interface that looks great on all screen sizes. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to build responsive Swift UI user interfaces. Hey, Code Crew, in case you're new here, my name's Chris and welcome. I've been teaching beginners how to build apps since 2013. So if that's what you want to do, you're in the right place. Now, if you're just starting out, I highly recommend that you check out the 14 day beginner challenge right over there. There's a whole community of people in our Code Crew forum going through that challenge right now. All right, now let's dive into today's topic. So before we can even talk about how to fix a broken UI, you first need to detect that your UI is broken. And that means previewing it in different devices and orientations. So make sure you have the preview canvas open. If you're on one of your views, simply click on that and go to canvas. You've probably discovered this yourself, but you can change the simulator and that's going to change how your UI is displayed. And you can sort of preview how it's going to look on different devices like this by changing the simulator, but it's not a very efficient way to do it. If you look at your view code here at the very bottom for your views, at least you're going to see a struct that is specifically for powering the preview over here on the preview canvas. Now, what you can do here is add a modifier to um, customize what device it's going to preview in. You can either do this through code. So you can add a modifier called preview device, and then you can pass in a string and it has to be exactly one of these simulator strings here. Even for example, iPhone SE second generation, you have to put in the brackets, second generation, and basically the whole thing. Now I'm not going to type that out, but let's type in, you know, iPhone eight, you're going to see that change right there. Um, another way to do it easier with less typing is instead of, typing it out by hand, you could just use the attributes inspector here. Uh, if you're looking at the preview and just change the device in this dropdown, and it's going to accomplish the same thing. So there's iPhone eight, and there's iPhone SE second generation, as you can see, that's the string right there. Now doing it this way also lets you do multiple previews. So you, you don't have to be restricted to previewing you know, one thing at one time. So if you're targeting a handful of devices, you can have multiple previews. So maybe this one's going to be iPhone 12. This one's going to be iPhone eight and so on. And then all you need to do at a glance, you can see your UI on multiple devices. So the next question is how do you preview your UI on different orientations? Well, in iOS 15, that's coming out in a couple of months, there will be a new modifier that you can specify on your preview to define what orientation it's going to display in. If you go into your project properties here, you can see a portrait upside down, landscape left, landscape right. So you're going to be able to specify one of these orientations and that is going to change what you see here. For now though, currently iOS 14, we don't have that modifier. So one other thing we can do is instead customize the layout here, choose fixed, and then you are going to manually specify, you see it changed that one to a square because it's a hundred width and a hundred height, but you can specify um, a width and a height that makes it in landscape mode. One of the sites that you can use, which is pretty handy is ios-resolution.com. If you come here, let's say you're targeting uh, iPhone eight, you're going to take the, uh, the logical width and the logical height right here. Uh, and then you're going to put in, well, if it's in landscape, the, the width is going to be the long side, right? So the width is going to be 667 and the height is going to be 375. So that's what you're going to put in here and 667. And then you're going to see that in landscape. And you can even give this a name because it's going to get confusing. So you can give it a name here, iPhone eight landscape. And it's going to give you a title 
right here and you can name your other ones as well. Now, just going back to here for a second, if you're wondering what the difference between the physical width and you know the logical width is, you'll notice that iPhone 8 is a retina screen. So every, um, every logical pixel on your iPhone 8 is actually comprised of more pixels than it actually is. Um, so that's why it looks so crisp and clear. And so you can see that the actual number, number of pixels on the screen is 750, but you know, in terms of the width, but the system is reporting 375. Same thing goes for the height. The actual number is 334, but the reported number is 667. So every pixel or every logical pixel is actually going to be made up of four physical pixels. Long story short, if you ask iPhone 8 how many pixels wide is it, it's going to give you back 375 and not 750. So you use the logical width and the logical height. So just to recap for now, using this preview layout with a fixed height and width in landscape mode might be the best solution we have now until iOS 15 rolls out when we have a new modifier called preview interface orientation. You can pass in one of these orientations and that's that. All right, now you know how to preview your user interface on a variety of devices and screen sizes. Swift UI does a pretty good job with its declarative syntax to arrange things so that your UI doesn't look broken on various screen sizes. However, sometimes there may be a case where your UI doesn't look quite the way you want. So you might be thinking, how do you identify that specific scenario? Maybe that specific device on a specific orientation, uh, and you want to handle that case. Just to give an example, let's say that on an iPhone 8 in landscape mode, your UI looks a little bit busted. So now you're thinking, how do I detect through code that the user is using an iPhone 8 and he or she is holding it in landscape orientation? That's not what you want to do because that is essentially a band-aid solution. It's not recommended. There are a couple of reasons why doing this is a bad idea. Let me explain. The terms portrait and landscape have sort of lost their meaning because now there exists split views in iPad. So in this case, you have the device in landscape orientation, but as you can see, the space that you have for your app is a portrait sized area. So if you detect for landscape orientation and you display your UI in landscape mode, when you've only got a portrait sized area space, it's going to look strange. Furthermore, detecting for and targeting specific devices in your code is a losing battle because Apple releases so many new devices all the time. Instead, Apple wants you to use size classes. If you've never heard of them, these are a combination of attributes that can describe the amount of space you have. First, you have regular height, which means that you have expansive space vertically. Then you also have compact height, which means that you have a constrained amount of space on the vertical axis. Next up, you have regular width. And lastly, you guessed it, compact width. Notice there's no mention of device orientation here because it's just not how you hold your device that might constrain your space, as you saw earlier with the split screen iPad example. And that's it. Using these four attributes, you can decide how you want to lay out your user interface. So for example, in the human interface guidelines, you can see the variety of devices and orientations can be described using a combination of these size class attributes. Instead of detecting specifically for a certain device and a certain orientation, you can detect for the size class and that'll tell you the type of space your app currently has to work with. If you really want the code to detect the specific device and orientation, that the user is using, it does exist, but it's the old way of doing things. I'll provide some links in the description if you're curious about that. But in this particular video, we're gonna go with the current best practices, which is to base our user interface off of size classes. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. All right, now you know to use size classes. Next question, how do we detect the size class from our view code in SwiftUI? Well, it's already part of the view. You just have to read it and we're gonna use this environment property wrapper. And very simply, you create a property for the vertical size class and you do the same for the horizontal size class and you can get the values of the current, you know, 
whether it's regular or compact for the width and the height. So let me give you an example. So first of all, we use the environment uh, wrapper and we specify the key path. So you can see here, specify the key path to the environment value. And in this particular case, it is vertical size class. And then you declare your property like normal. So maybe we'll call this uh, on the vertical, we'll call it vertical size class. This is going to be a type of uh, user interface size class set of values that indicates the visual size available to the view. This is going to be optional because this might not always be available. Uh, we're also going to do one for the horizontal. So again, you specify the key path to be the horizontal size class, right? And that's the path to read that value that's already there. Horizontal size class is going to be a type of user interface size class. And again, optional. And that's it. If these values exist and they're known, then they will be available for you in these properties that you've specified here. Since we have these two properties, it's just a simple case of using if statements in here. And let's do a, an example where this is an iPhone 12. Let's go into the human interface guidelines and look at the size classes for an iPhone 12. All right, so this is portrait orientation in this first column and landscape orientation here. So when it's in portrait mode, it's compact width and regular height. Makes sense. Now in landscape orientation, it is still compact width but it is also compact height. So compact and compact, right? Versus portrait is compact width and regular height. So really the only thing that changes is the height, right? The, uh, on the width, it's both compact width. So we are going to, let's say, change this text label depending on the height size class, right? This is the vertical size class. If it's regular, then we'll say portrait. If it's compact, then we'll say landscape. So let's start with, uh, we'll just use an if statement here. If horizontal size class, and I guess we didn't really talk about this user interface size class data type. So why don't we go and take a look at what it is? So it is an enum and the potential values for this is either compact and regular, right? just like we talked about. So we're going to be checking against this, uh, checking against it for these values. So if horizontal size class is equal to uh, regular, which means it's portrait, then we are going to display this. Right, and we're just going to put portrait. Else if horizontal size class, or we can just do else, right? Or you know what, we'll just we'll do another else. So text landscape else unknown. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens. We are going to launch the simulator. Uh, first of all, we let's check on the project properties, uh, what orientations this supports. By default, I don't think upside down is enabled, so I had to enable that. But here's something that you might not know. On the devices where you have this, um, this blocker here, it is not going to go into upside down orientation. So, you know, in the beginning it says landscape, it's, it's not detecting it properly. But once you change it, oh, this is not working, you know why? because I was looking at the wrong size class. I, I should have been looking at the vertical size class because that's height, right? So maybe a better name for these might be height size class and width size class. So let's, we should be checking for the height because um, for the iPhone 12, it's really the height size class that changes across portrait and orientation. 
So some of you who are watching might have caught on to that. My mistake, sorry about that. And let's run this and try it again. Okay, so now it's portrait. If I flip it, it's landscape. If I flip it again to upside down, you'll see that nothing changes because on these devices with the blocker, it doesn't actually flip, uh, go into upside down orientation. If I flip it, flip it again, landscape, flip it back to right side up, it's portrait. Now if you try it with another device such as the iPhone 8 that doesn't have the blocker, you'll see that um, you actually do get an upside down orientation. So we've got portrait, landscape, and this is upside down again. So you can see it properly goes into portrait again. This is the landscape. Number one, try not to use any specific heights or widths in any of the views that you're specifying. While it might look good in your current layout, it becomes a liability for smaller or larger screen sizes because it won't scale. Instead, you can specify relative heights and widths if you need to, and you can do this using the geometry reader. Now, number three, SwiftUI uses a declarative syntax, which means that it decides how to arrange and lay out all of the components in your view. And I would say most of the time it does a pretty good job, but it would really help if you understood how the uh, SwiftUI views and components play nicely together. And what I mean by that is understanding the nature of how a SwiftUI component reacts when you give it more space or you take away its space. For example, an image component expands to take up all of its available space. And same goes for a color component. A button or a text component, on the other hand, only takes up as much space as it needs. The trick is to know the behavior of each of these elements and how it prefers to display itself on the screen. That way, as you're putting these different components into layout containers, you know how they are going to interact with each other and you can arrange them in a way where the outcome is what you'd expect. Now, one way you can remind yourself about this is just to test out the various components in an empty Xcode project. Uh, on the other hand, you can do what I do is use a reference guide. For me, I use this Swift UI views mastery from big mountain studio so this is what i'm referring to text views pull in whereas other components push out and take up as much space as uh, it can get same thing goes for the geometry reader for example so this particular guide is really handy because it goes through all of the elements in swift ui and sort of explains to you how they react and how they behave and there's a lot of code snippets with how to use them as well. This particular one is from Big Mountain Studio, and I find myself occasionally flipping through it when I forget about how a component behaves. I'll leave a link in the description below in case you're curious about checking this out. So now you know how to create fluid, dynamic user interfaces that work well on any sort of screen size. If you want to learn how to design amazing looking user interfaces in Figma, which is a design tool, or maybe you want to learn how to use Figma itself. Check out our design course right over there or some of the Figma tutorials that we have done on YouTube. Lastly, if you like this video and you want to see more, consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.